When I heard that Windows 10 was getting an official Microsoft endorsed package manager, I knew I had to test it out. So today, we're going to be taking a look at WinGet. Now, I know on Windows 10, there are a couple of other package managers like Chocolatey that have an established user base and are just really, really good pieces of software. Back when I was on Windows 10, I did use Chocolatey fairly heavily, but today, let's have a look at what Microsoft can put together themselves. So, this right here is a Windows 10 VM, just because it's a bit easier to record than my Windows 10 on hardware. So, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is actually install WinGet. Now, because it's still a preview piece of software, we're not going to be super critical of it. Obviously, I'm going to talk about things that I want to see improved, but keep in mind, this still is a piece of preview software. So if you want to install it, the easiest way to install it, especially if you're like me and you just want to install it to test it, is to go and download it from the GitHub page and download the installer. So you can download this Apex bundle, basically just run this and you can install the file. Another method you can take is to install a flight or preview version of the Windows app installer and be inside of the Windows Package Manager Insider program or participate in the Windows Insider Flight Ring. I have no idea what those things are. I presume if you're like a, a heavy Windows user, you probably know about those things. But the easiest method for me was just going through the GitHub page. So now that preamble is out of the way, let's just see how this works. So this right here is also the new Windows Terminal. I thought if we're going to test out WinGet, we might as well test this out as well. You can also go and test it with the PowerShell Terminal and also the uh, Command.exe, but we might as well just do it in here. So if we just run WinGet with no arguments, what we'll get here is the help page. We can also run it with dash dash help and also dash question mark. I guess those are all just aliases for the same thing. I've never seen dash question mark before. I think that's just a Microsoft thing that they're doing. I don't think I've ever seen a Linux program use that before. If someone knows of one, feel free to let me know. But generally, it's either dash H or dash dash help. This technically doesn't support dash H, but if you put no argument in there, it'll just bring up the help page anyway. So, sort of supports it? Not really, though. Anyway, as you can see, there are a couple different commands that we can give to it. So, we can give it the install command, show, source, search, hash, and validate. Now, I'll go through all of these separately, but you might notice there are two very important things missing here. So, the two missing are uninstall and upgrade. So... I'm not sure why they even bothered to release the package manager without those two very basic things being there. You don't need the show or the source or the search, but not being able to uninstall or upgrade a package basically makes the package manager useless. Now, I know that a lot of Windows software, you install it directly in the software. So I guess you can kind of get away with it, but that's not something you would ever get away with doing on Linux. If you released a package manager that you couldn't upgrade or uninstall software with, no one would care about your package manager. So I hope to see that coming soon, but for now, it's not a thing you can do. So if we just start with, let's go with winget show. We'll do that one first. And if we just run this with dash question mark or dash dash help, we'll get a help page for this. So winget show will basically let you show information on a specific program. Now, one thing that is annoying me about this is there's no way to say, I want to only look at programs that I have installed. When you do WinGet Show, it's going to be showing for the entire database of software. So you can still look at software that you have installed, but there's no way to limit it to only be software that is installed. This has a couple of different options. So we have the query option, which isn't actually explained in this help page. I don't know if it's explained in the, uh, the extended documentation, which is available on a website. Now, I'm not a fan of doing documentation like this. If you're going to do your documentation, please put it in your actual documentation in the software. Don't make me have to go to a website to look at the documentation. So if we look at this, though, there might be some example of how query actually works. So winget show dash q query. So that's a separate block from the options. But does it show what the query actually is? So is there any reference to query on this page? If the query provided to winget does not result in a single application, uh, no, it doesn't actually show what a query requires you to put into. I don't know if it's a regex search or if it's just checking by name or if it's checking by... ID or auth or anything like that. I'm not sure what that query option is supposed to do. They haven't actually explained it anywhere on here, which is a little bit annoying, I would say. So 
I don't know what that's supposed to be doing, but anyway. So if we just test out show and say look at the information for Vim, which is a program that I do have installed. We just have to give it a second to download everything because it's not going to do it based on local information you have installed. But as you can see in here, it's found Vim, it's found the version that it is, the publisher, the author, the moniker, and a bunch of other information about it. Now that search we just did wasn't based on the name of the application, it was actually based on the moniker of the application. So in the case of Vim, there's no difference here. But as we can see, if we do winget show VS code, if we do it like this, as you'll see, we'll get the information for VS code now. Give it just a second to download it. As you can see here, the name of the application is actually Visual Studio Code and the app moniker is VS Code. And the way we can test this is if we do winget show dash dash name VS Code, as you'll notice, nothing actually gets found from this. But if we do that same query, but this time do it on the moniker VS Code, this time we'll actually find the information about it. So just keep in mind that there is a name and there is also a moniker. I don't know why they've called it Visual Studio Code. I don't know anyone who says out the full name except for Microsoft themselves. So now that we've done a bit of a search for VS Code, let's actually go and install it. So if we do winget install dash question mark, I, don't, I think I was saying dash Q earlier. I meant to say dash question mark. As you can see, we can download based on the manifest, the ID, the name, moniker, the source, exact. So exact is find app using exact match. I'm guessing that is an exact match based on the name. Once again, some of these options aren't exactly clear and I'm guessing there's extended documentation on the website. Once again, as I said with show, I still don't like doing it like this. I'd much rather have everything actually documented in the application so I don't have to go to my web browser for it. Give that a second to load up and the other options in here, so we have a silent installation, that's cool. We can log out the data as well. We can override any of the arguments passed to the installer. And we can set the location to install the file to if it's supported. So here, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm guessing they're going to extend this in later releases, but right now the examples are pretty limited and it doesn't really show once again how the query works. So let's just go and install VS Code. So if we just go winget install VS Code, that should just work perfectly fine. I haven't tested installing VS Code yet. It found it. It's now downloading it. So that's going to take a little bit of time. I will cut back to when that is done. So it seems to be working fine. It's brought up the regular Windows installer and now it has finished and it has successfully installed and it's opened up the application. Cool. So it seems to be installed. Can we find it from... Searching in here, Visual Studio Code, yet it's working just fine in here. Can we open it up in here, VS Code? Is that going to work? I actually don't know. I don't ever open up stuff from the terminal in Windows. Okay, sure. I'm sure there's some way to open it up from here. I don't know what it is, though. So install seems to be working just fine as well. So let's have a look at the next argument. If we just win get again, what do we want to have a look at this time? So we've still got to have a look at source. So let's see what that one does. Source actually is kind of cool. Basically what Source is going to be doing is it'll let you set, I guess, sub repos to pull from. So manage sources with the sub commands. A source provides the data for you to discover and install applications. So basically when you install Winget, it'll connect you to the main Winget repos. But say you want to install something from other repos. Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. So you can actually add more repos to install applications from. Now there are obvious security concerns here. So make sure you're actually checking what you install rather than just installing anything out there because if you just do that, well, you might as well just download malware onto your system at that point because that's pretty much what you're going to end up doing. So be careful when you are installing from repos outside of the main winget ones, but let's see what we can do in here. So if we go winget source and then go list, so this should show us as we can see, we've just got the winget repo in here. Now, I don't actually have any extra sources to pull from. I don't know if any already exist, but if they do, then you could just go add, and I presume you can just add in the URL to add that. So that's actually kind of cool. So if there are a bunch of programs in a repo that isn't the main winget repo, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to install those. So let's move on to the search command. So if we just go winget search dash question mark, what does this one do? I'm going to guess search is probably pretty straightforward what this one does as well. 
it will let you find and show info on apps, which I'm not sure how that differs from the show command. Let's just test that out. So if we just go win get search, let's just do vim. Okay, so this is just the absolute basic information on it. So name, ID, version. So I'm not really sure why these two commands exist then. Shouldn't they just be merged into one? Because this is basically a shortened down information version of the other command. I get that this command is for showing more than one thing, but you could just do show and say return multiple result or return one result. There would be no reason why these two subcommands need to exist. So I would say merge them together. That would be my suggestion, but there might be things they want to do in the future that would make sense to keep them separate. But for now, I would say that it just makes sense to bring them together. Let's just test it with returning more information though. So if we just search like this, yeah, it's pretty much just a shortened down information version of the show command. And I did notice something interesting in there. Where was it? Uh, right here, Katawa Shoujo. I like that that's one of the very early things that got into the repos. I don't know why it's here, but hey, that is cool. Now we still have two more things left to test, and these last two are mainly here for the developers. So if we do winget dash question mark again, as we can see, we have a hash and a validate. So let's see what the hash command will do. This one is one that most people won't find themselves using. This is basically a helper to hash installer files. Basically, this is going to be used before you get your installer script actually put into the winget repos. So this one, I wouldn't find many regular users using. But if you are developing the winget packages, then I can see why you would need that one. And the other one was validate. This one is also one for the developers. So this is basically for making sure that your manifest file is going to work. Basically, as I said, the manifest file is pretty much just a build script. So it'll validate a manifest using a strict set of guidelines. This is intended to enable you to check your manifest before submitting to a repo. So basically, it's just going to make sure that your build script is going to work fine. So overall, I would say that minus the missing very basic features, this is actually a fairly solid package manager. It's nice that you can pull in from separate sources outside of the main Microsoft ones. It's nice that you can see a bunch of information on the packages. I would like to see a way to limit it to just applications you have installed. And obviously, I would like to see a way to uninstall and upgrade packages. And I would like a bit more information on how that query actually works because right now it's just not documented at all from what I can see. There might be some somewhere, but from what I've noticed, there doesn't seem to be any documentation on how the query works. So overall, as I said, pretty good piece of software. If I was running the project, I would have waited a little bit before making it public because a package manager without a way to uninstall or upgrade in my books is effectively useless. So at this stage, I would recommend sticking with something like Chocolatey or any of the other package managers that exist for Windows already, partially because those package managers are already really well established. They have pretty much anything you could possibly want to install in them and you can upgrade and uninstall stuff. So that's a good enough reason, if anything, to use them. Now, I know this obviously wasn't a Linux related video, but I like cool software and I assume that you guys like cool software, otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this channel. So that's why I covered it. I'm not going to be doing Windows videos all of the time. This was kind of a special occasion. I'm not going to be doing a video on the Windows terminal. I've been playing around with it a little bit and it's, it's a terminal. I don't really have anything special to say about it. It has tabs, it has panes, you can write things in it. It's a terminal. So that's my review of the Windows terminal and you're not getting a video on that one. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video now, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Gabriel, Peter, Lee, Road, Tony Donald, Oculari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want to get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea, available on Library and BitTube, and also this channel, which is available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.